Well, Ilya Ponomarenko is the defense reporter with the Kyiv Independent and joins us live now. Um, Ilya, thanks so much for joining us. We understand the capital where you are is under curfew now. Is that right? And if so, what is the feeling there? Um, the mayor saying you're expecting Russian forces to intensify their attacks. Yes, we are in a curfew, the long curfew, which is ex expected to last for more than 30 hours. It's, I think it's the second time that we have this long curfew, which is basically two days long. I believe at this point, the thing behind this long curfew is that, you know, we've, we've been having this operational lull in hostilities west uh, and east of uh, of the capital city. But uh, at this point, I think we are facing something that we faced uh probably a week and a half ago, which is the threat of uh, Russian subversive activity. So in many ways, this long curfew, including uh, during daylight time, it's imposed because of uh, a huge threat of sabotage activities. Uh, so far, militarily, we don't think that, you know, Russian military are ready to, you know, to impose a full-fledged assault on the city. But um, their attack might be might follow the subversive activities, which is why, as we believe, and the whole community believe, which is why we need this long curfew. Are there fears that the capital could see the kinds of conditions that we're witnessing in the port city of Mariupol, where the UN says it's suffocating under the Russian bombardment there with little food, water, and, and medical supplies getting through? Well, it's a common belief that, you know, Russian military in the region, particularly the, the capital city region, they do not have enough manpower and military power to to impose the full and effective blockade uh, around the city as huge as Kiev. So basically what we expect, seriously expect, is the uh, Russian attempts to uh, blockade, to block the city from the west and from the east and to, to start, you know, bombarding it relentlessly. Um, the same the thing that we saw in Kharkiv, in Chernigiv, in Mariupol. Uh, so far, you know, the Ukrainian military is managing to keep them uh, weak enough and far from uh, the city borders enough uh, not to give them a chance to effectively block the city. But... Uh, since they fall short of manpower to, you know, directly assault the city. So we expect this uh, Aleppo tactics, as we call it, uh, all over again around Kiev. The Ukrainian resistance has been strong, as you mentioned, and brave. A Russian official says the invasion is not going to plan. But how long can the Ukrainian military withstand this Russian assault? <laughs> Uh, I think at this point, particularly right now, we are not facing the immediate threats of, you know, losing the, the armed forces, of armed forces collapsing. We have been past this point long ago uh, in many ways just because we have managed to bought a lot of time for, um, for general mobilization of our armed forces and for um, uh, strengthening the defense of cities, particularly Kiev. So right now uh, the question is... Uh, for the Ukrainian military to endure, you know, to exhaust, keep exhausting the uh, Russian military uh, to the point of uh, the Russian military in Ukraine being not able to continue waging warfare from, you know, from uh, the point of view of resources and morale. So, so far, the situation is preferable for the Ukrainian military just because it has managed to complete the uh, mobilization of manpower and also to rebuild the economy and also to uh, uh, endure this initial shock of the first days of invasion. So at this point, I think uh, we have uh, we have been past this very danger of big collapsing. So, so far, it's a war of exha exhausting uh, warfare right now. So I think by this point, we can keep on holding as long as possible. The biggest question is, uh, if our economy and our public morale can endure this. Okay, Ilya, thank you. Ilya Ponomarenko, they're the defense reporter with the Kyiv Independent.